Uh, reading from, the, episode, from uh, the book of the Apocalypse of Blessed John the Apostle for the Feast of All Saints. In those days, behold, I, John, saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun and having the signs of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we sign the, the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them that were signed, a hundred and forty thousand, were signed of, out of every tribe of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Reuben twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Gad twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Aizah twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Nephtali twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Manasseh twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Simeon twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Levi twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Issachar twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Zabulon twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Joseph twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Benjamin. 12,000 signed. And after this, I saw a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and in the sight of the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and the ancients and the four living creatures, and they fell down before the throne upon their faces, and adored God, saying, Benediction and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up to a, into a mountain, and when he was sat down, his disciples came unto him. And opening his mouth, he told them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice, for they shall have their fill. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. Announces of the week. So tonight we have a um, benediction, rosary and benediction at 5:30 p.m. Tomorrow is All Souls Day, so it is a day to commemoration of all the faithful departed. There will be three masses: 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and 11:05 Boy School Song Mass and rosary at 5:30 p.m. On Tuesday, also three masses. 6, 7 a.m. and 11.25 low mass on Tuesday. On Wednesday, same uh, three masses, 6, 7 and 11.25 low mass. On Thursday, 6, 7 a.m. all day adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and 5.30 p.m. rosary and benediction and 6 p.m. mass as usual. Next Friday is the first Friday of the month. So we have 7 a.m. mass as usual, 11.05 girls school, school song mass and Rosary and Benedict and Mass at 6 p.m. followed by exposition of the Blessed Sacrament for the whole night. So I, and next Saturday is the first Saturday with the um, reposition of the Blessed Sacrament at 5, 7.30 a.m. with benediction and uh, Song Mass at 8 a.m. for the first Saturday. I do recommend you the two days of adoration, the Thursday for the all day adoration as usual, and the night adoration from th Friday to Saturday. It's an occasion to make reparation, to come closer to Jesus. So I do make an effort, I do recommend that every week, but it's worth doing it again, um, uh, to your devotion. This week I ask your special prayers for Father Jean-Baptiste Framont. Father Framont is a priest of the society who used to be in Holy Cross Seminary in Australia and who, uh, I think he might even have come to New Zealand, but he certainly did go to New Caledonia um, at least a few times, about 10 or 15 years ago. 
and he is very sick and has received extra function, so please pray for him. Um, also, uh, if you have some holy soul list that are already on the altar, but they may be more put in the box at the entrance, if you want uh, them to be included and put on the altar, do so without delay. And uh, it is good to look at our um, members of our parish on the map of Aramono Cemetery so that uh, you can pray for one another. And there is a special indulgence, uh, plenary indulgence, every day if you go and visit the uh, cemetery and pray for the repose of the soul of the faithful departed. Also today is the big feast for us, it is our jubilee, it is the 50th anniversary of the birth of the Society of St. Pius X, uh, approval uh, on the 1st of November 1970, so it's very important. Um, I have written a little letter that you find at the entrance. Um, in the letter I recall some of the events at the beginning, there will be more of course, I do recommend you to read the book of Bishop Tissin Madre on Abdul Refer that gives in detail all this beginning of the society. Bishop Tissin Madre was one of the very first nine seminarians in 1969, before even the approval of the society. And um, so, um, there's one point that I did not put in my letter, but which I want to add, um, is the fact that um, if Abdul Befeb and the priests who kept the traditional Mass wanted to be without trouble, they would just have said the Mass for themselves without any faithful, and they would not have had any trouble, and they would have died in peace, but they would have not helped the faithful. It is because they helped you, because they have the faithful, especially the old one who remember Father Cummins and the priest who came at the beginning, um, because they helped you that in a certain way they got in trouble. And the same thing for Abdul Befeb, because he trained seminarians and because he was an ordaining priest who said the traditional mass, that's why he got in trouble. Um, but it was his duty to transmit that which he had received, that the very nature of tradition I have passed on that which I have received. And um, the, uh, he did that in, in order to continue tradition, and thanks to him, um, the traditional mass continues. It is organized even by those who don't like Abdul Befeb, that if he had not been there, the traditional mass would probably not have continued. So you have you to thank him for his uh, work. And we have to be faithful and in our turn receive and transmit this treasure. Treasure of uh, centuries of holiness in the church, treasure that contains the most precious um, gift of our Lord for his church, that is the Holy Eucharist. So, um, this anniversary is a great joy for us, and um, I, you should all participate in that joy um, and uh, pray for all of us and pray for more vocations. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. After this, I saw a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and in the sight of the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Heaven, with the societies of the saints, will be beautiful. All will be perfectly united in the contemplation, adoration, admiration and praise of the Most Holy Trinity. All united in one love of God above all, and in all, and of the neighbor for God's sake. No more discord, no more jealousy, no more pride, no more evil desires, no more evil language, no more sensuality, no sin at all. Everyone will be immaculate. Having come out of the great tribulation and having washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. To wash our robe in the blood of the Lamb, that's how we can become immaculate. Only Our Lady was Immaculate from the beginning, by a very unique grace, the privilege of the Immaculate Conception. But what our Lord Jesus Christ has given to her at the beginning, He will give to His Bride, the Church, at the end. Then truly the words of St. Paul will be fulfilled, that He might present to Himself a glorious Church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, Immaculata, in Latin, Immaculate. But in order for us to become immaculate, we have to wash our soul in the blood of the Lamb. So the path to heaven is the way of the cross, in which our Lord Jesus Christ washes our souls in His precious blood. 
So truly, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who imitate the poverty of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Detached from all greed or covetousness, detached from earthly worries, trusting divine providence while doing their duty, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, like our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, not rendering evil for evil, but overcoming evil by good, overcoming the evil of our sins by the good of his sacrifice. Meekness goes with patience and perseverance, for they shall possess the land, that is, as St. Thomas Aquinas explains, they shall be saved from the tempest of this world and shall reach the harbor of eternal peace, the stability of eternal life. Blessed are they that mourn, like our, our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, weeping for our sins. St. Paul indeed writes to the Hebrews that our Lord Jesus Christ in the days of his flesh, with a strong cry and tears, offering up prayers and supplication to him that was able to save him from, the dead, from, from death, was heard for his reverence. While the world searches for pleasures, the friends of our Lord Jesus Christ, the friends of the cross, embrace the opposite. They do penance for their sins, they beg forgiveness for the world by prayers and tears. But to those friends of the cross, mourning with our Lord Jesus Christ is promised that they shall be comforted. And what comfort? Listen to the word of, the God, uh, the word of God in the Apocalypse of St. John. The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall rule them and shall lead them to the fountains of the waters of life. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more, no mourning, no crying, no sorrow shall be any more, for the former things are passed away. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice with our Lord Jesus Christ crucified. Uh, Isaiah says in his famous prophecy of the Passion, Because his soul hath labored on the cross, he shall see and be filled. By his knowledge shall this my just servant justify many, and he shall bear their iniquities. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered satisfying to the divine justice, so that our souls could be justified, because he loved justice and hated iniquity. Do we hunger for this justice that is for holiness? Wisdom exhorts us, love justice, and you that are the judges of the earth. Think of the Lord in goodness and seek him with in simplicity of heart. And David sings, seek ye the Lord and be strengthened. Seek the Lord, his, his face evermore. And Isaiah bids us, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And the prophet Amos says, Seek the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. You that have wrought his judgment, seek the just, seek the meek. If by any means you, you may be hid in the day of the Lord's indignation. For those who seek him, the good Lord will fill them with his own self. They shall have their fill. So that God will be all in all. That is, all the saints in heaven will be filled with God finding eternal and infinite happiness in him. Blessed are the merciful, like our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, who offered himself in our place to have mercy on us, heal our misery, the mystery of sin. He is the good Samaritan who had mercy on the wounded man on the roadside, that is, on us. Those who share his mercy for others will themselves be blessed, for they shall obtain mercy. We exercise this mercy, first of all, in the spiritual works of mercy, which are the most important because they heal the greatest misery, the misery of sin. We also exercise the mercy by corporal works of mercy, which are so dear to our Divine Saviour. Blessed are the clean of heart, like our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, so detached from the pleasures of this world, the very opposite of the sensuality of the modern world. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is not only the opposite of sin, but also the remedy for sin. The blood of Christ cleanses our soul, as St. Paul says to the Hebrews. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of an heifer being sprinkled sanctify such as are defiled to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of, the, of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted to God, in Latin, immaculato, immaculate, Immaculate victim cleans our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. All we who need to, to clean our heart, let us come to the cross of Jesus Christ. Let us wash our soul in the blood of the Lamb. Let us do real penance to be conformed to our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, and thereby obtain all these graces. 
Then the fruit shall be that we can see clear, for they shall see God. Eternal vision of God, which is the essential reward, is promised to the clean of heart, to those who have cleansed their heart in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are the peacemakers, like our Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, as St. Paul says, through Christ to reconcile all things unto himself, making peace through the blood of his cross, both as to the things that are on earth and the things that are in heaven. Because by his cross, our Lord Jesus Christ restored the order, puts back all things in order that is in submission to God. By his cross, he sets order and peace within our soul, and then one can set order and peace outside. The great lesson of the cross is humility. Humility puts us at the right place with regard to God. Proud man does not like it, yet God resists the proud and giveth his grace to the humble. By his own strength, man cannot go up to God. If he, if he tries, this pride only causes him to stumble very evil. But man can humble himself by the grace of God, and then God takes over and raises him to become a child of God. Amen, I say to you, unless you be converted and become like little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. One needs to humble himself to become a child, but what great dignity to be a child of God, for they shall be called the children of God. And the last beatitude is even more evidently linked with the cross. Blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And our Lord insists, blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you and shall and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake. But then the reward is already, already starts here below. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. <coughs> so, my dear brethren, the path to heaven is the way of the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ has both, both showed the way and purchased for us by his merits all the graces necessary to walk on that way. And not to walk, but even to run, as the scripture says, I have run on the way of thy commandments, when thou hast enlarged my heart, dilated my heart, by pouring his charity in our hearts. So, my dear brethren, let us examine ourselves. Are we living these beatitudes? Are we walking on the way of the cross, the way of our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are we compromising with ourselves with the world, with the spirit of this, of this world of darkness, which St. John denounces? <coughs> Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the charity of the Father is not in him. That's a strong saying. If any one love the world, the charity of the Father is not in him. <coughs> For all that is in the world is the contributions of the flesh, and the contributions of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the concupiscences stay off. But he that doth the will of God abideth forever. <coughs> Sometimes one wonders why this was that, that child has gone astray. Often one finds that they were caught with the world through modern music, through computer games, or phone games, or through videos, or other dangerous medias. We have preached about it, yet the parents have let these dangerous things in the hands of their children, and then they wonder why they go astray. Sometimes even the parents give the bad example, and then they cannot prevent the children to follow that bad example. My dear brethren, I beg you, are you truly following the Beatitudes of our Lord? In St. Luke's Gospel, the Beatitudes are followed by some vows. Our Lord says, But vow to you that are rich, for you have your consolation. Vow to you that are filled, for you shall hunger. Vow to you that now laugh, for you shall mourn and weep. Vow to you that when men shall bless you, for according to these things did their fathers do to, their to the false prophets. These the, these are the judgments of God, which are not the judgments of the world. So when we contemplate the saints in heaven, we all want to go to heaven. We all want to have eternal beatitude as promised by our Lord. For the eye has not seen, nor the ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what things God has prepared for them that love him. Yet how many are prepared to put the price? That is to renounce the flesh, the world, and even our own selves. For which of you, our Lord says, having a mind to build a tower, does not sit first down and reckon the charges that are necessary, whether he have the wherewithal to finish it? <coughs> Many want to enjoy this world and yet go to heaven. Many want to make as little effort here below and yet go to heaven. 
but Arut concludes, so likewise, every one of you that does not renounce all that he possesses cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not carry his cross after me cannot be my disciple. So St. Paul could say, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. <clears throat> Where can we find the love of the cross? Can the cross be, ever become sweet? Yes, it can. And it is realized in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There truly we have the sacrifice of the cross with, with its marvelous fruit, Holy Communion. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is sweet. Blessed is the man that hopeth in him. Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Take up my yoke upon you, and learn of me, because I am meek and humble of heart. And you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is sweet, and my burden light. Here below there is nothing more beautiful than that friendship with God, as a child of God, to live of God, whom we receive in Holy Communion, to become more and more one with Him, one thinking, one love, one zeal for the spreading of the Holy Gospel, one zeal for the salvation of souls, all this is a fruit of Holy Communion, and this leads to everlasting communion in Heaven. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of all saints, lead us with her first at the foot of the cross, and then into the eternal dwellings, with her Son who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost forever and ever. Amen.